This is Pop Culture Period Peace Podcast. I'm Laura. And I'm Julie. We are actors, costumers, movie, and book enthusiasts. But we have very different tastes. So every week we pick a pop culture period piece to talk about. Our thoughts about the movie and also anything the movie brings up. Like how the mummy is totally written through the female gaze and Santa Fe from Newsies is the ultimate I want song. Do you know what that is? Listen to us. So if you like movies with corsets, manners, and cottage core aesthetics, give us a listen. Pop culture period piece has a new episode dropping every Thursday. Goodbye. Bye. I just really don't know where I failed. Nowhere, Daddy. You're perfect. The absolute best. I'm not talking about me, girls. I'm talking about you two. We know. We're total screw-ups, and we couldn't be sorrier. What can we do to make you forgive us? Well, we can't go on like this, girls. Something's got to change. It's obvious I've done nothing to teach you anything about responsibility. Well, that's not true. We always put our clothes in the hamper. I even separate my colors from the whites. I'm I'm talking about reaching just a little higher, ladies. (laughs) Just just a little higher. Just just a little higher. (laughs) Bring me higher. Hey, Val. Hey, Al. Welcome to D-Commentaries. Thank you. Welcome to you and welcome to our listeners. Today, we're talking about cowbells. Ring, ring, ring. The cowbell is ringing. Clang, clang. Clang, 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 clang goes the cowbell. <laughs> ding, 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 ding go the cows. They give birth in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, I have so many thoughts about that part. <laughs> Also, just in case you're like listening to this and like, wait, wasn't the next movie supposed to be High School Musical? You are not wrong. We're wrong. (laughs) We're wrong. We are wrong. We are. We will be the first ones to admit it. Well, I won't. (laughs) (laughs) I'll be the second. Val will be the first. (laughs) Yes, we um, had a little bit of a scheduling issue for the High School Musical episode. So we're putting this one out first, but we promise You will get your high school musical episode and it will be fun. We promise we will all be in this together soon. (laughs) That's right. But we watched Cowbells. But we watched Cowbells and it was fun. The Stu Krieger classic. Yeah, I think it's his last one. Sad. I know. I was so sad to to know that and see that. Wait, look at how small my mouth is. (laughs) It's the annual. It's the annual look (laughs) off. It got so small, (laughs) Um, but I just haven't done that in a while. I know. You're like the groundhog. You're like the groundhog on Groundhog's Day. (laughs) The one a year look at how small my mouth is. (laughs) Oh, I I wish everyone could see. (laughs) Maybe I'll put it up for everyone to see. Anyway, let's get through the business because I want to talk about this one. Mm Mm-hmm. So Cowbells came out March 24th, 2006. Um, I was well into college. I guess that's already been true for a while, but Mm -hmm. either way. I was in eighth grade. Wow. (laughs) Um, I always forget our age difference. (laughs) Yeah. Well, because now it doesn't really matter. Yeah. But back then. We're both adults. Yeah, we're both adults. Yeah. By legal standards. (laughs) This movie was uh, directed by Francine McDougal, who also directed Go Figure. Oh. Uh Uh-huh. Those are her only two DCOMs, um, but she does a lot of commercials and did some films, but she hasn't done a film since 2013. Cool. Mm Mm-hmm. This was written by actually two people. It was written Mm -hmm. by Sue Krieger, as we alluded to earlier. Stu, if you have forgotten, wrote Xenon, all three Xenons. Smart House, Phantom of the Megaplex, Rip Girls, even though he's uncredited, The Poof Point, True Confessions, Gotta Kick It Up, Going to the Mat, and Now You See It, where he's also uncredited, and then <clears throat> this movie. So prolific and amazing decom writer. If you are unaware, we actually interviewed Sue Krieger, and there's an episode on our feed with him. He mm-hmm. is a delight. Go listen to that. 
Yeah. The other writer on this was um, Matt Dearborn, who was a producer and writer for The Secret Life of Alex Mack and even Stevens and a show that came out a little bit later called Seek and Luther. Cool. So he definitely has that like type of style chops. Nice. As well. The cast is as follows. Ali Michalka played Taylor Callum, the older of the two sisters. Mm -hmm. You might remember her from Now You See It. Uh, She's also one half of Ali and AJ. Sure is. Um, She was on Phil of the Future, iZombie. She was in Easy A and something called Hellcats, which I forget if that was a show or a movie. Mm. She was joined by her sister, AJ Michalka, Mm -hmm. uh, who played her sister, Courtney. AJ is also the other half of Allie and AJ. Mm -hmm. She was in the movie Super 8 and she's been in some shows, uh, Schooled. She-Ra, the Princess of Power, and most recently, the Goldbergs. Yeah. And I didn't realize until this movie that her full name, she's credited in this movie as Amanda. Yes. So the A in AJ stands for Amanda, which I didn't know. Yeah. Maybe it's Amanda Jean. Amanda Joe. Amanda John. Amanda (laughs) Jingleheimer Schmidt. (laughs) One of those. It's one of those. Yeah. Speaking of J names, uh, Jack Coleman played their dad, Reed Callum. He had two very long stints on Days of Our Lives and Dynasty. So he's a a daytime soap guy. Um, But he was also on Heroes for a good chunk. And he was on a few episodes of The Office. Nice. Good for him. Yeah. He's a character actor. Um, He's been in, you know, one of everything. Nice. Yeah. I'd say he's like medium hot dad. Yeah, I think he's hot. Mm -hmm. I didn't like that they frosted his tips in this movie. (laughs) Maybe that's why I think he's medium hot. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. But I did think he was hot. Yeah. And and pretty cool. Yeah, he's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, Sheila McCarthy played Fran Walker, um, who I believe was the manager of the dairy plant. Mm -hmm. She is sort of half a voice actor and half of a live action actor. So she's did voices on Richard scary for oh, a very long time, which is cool. cool. Yeah. She was in a ton of stuff, like a lot of Canadian shows, like little mosque on the Prairie Murdoch mysteries. She was also in umbrella Academy and she's in zombies three. Cool. Yeah. So these are the only two decoms. They're separated by like 10 by years. a while. Yeah. She's so fun though. I thought she, she is such good energy. Yeah. I liked her a lot. Michael Trevino played Jackson Mead, who was the farm boy love interest of Allie slash mm-hmm. Taylor. Um, he was on Vampire Diaries for a long time. Oh, that's why he has 1.5 million Instagram followers. Yes. Um, he was on, he's been on other stuff, but like that was the standout for sure. Yeah. He's got a bunch of vampires following him. Mm hmm. Yeah. He's big with the vampires. Christian Serratos played Heather Perez, who was the girl's good friend, whose dad also worked at the plant. Mm -hmm. She was in something called Ned's Declassified Survival Guide, which I'd never heard of. Something called? Oh, okay. You know what it is. Whoa, Val, that is like pivotal for my childhood on on the network that must not be named Nickelodeon. (laughs) I okay. this is. I'm too old. I I'm know. Too old. I know. I watched, but the fact that you've never heard of it is very shocking to me. I mean, I basically stopped watching it like Angry Beavers. So. OK. Anything All right. after that. All right, everyone. I got this. <laughs> well, Ned's Declassified School Survival Guide was like the Nickelodeon show at that time. And okay. I remember her being on it, but I didn't realize what I knew her from. And so that's what I know her from. But yeah, it was such a good show. And it was like. Hmm. There was like a list and he would like how to survive school. And then it'd be like, find friends. And then they'd have an episode about like finding friends. And then hmm. they actually all kind of what everyone's doing now, getting their own podcast. So we have our brotherly love uh, podcast. We have mm-hmm. our boy meets world podcast. They, we have Christy Carlson Romano's podcast. Mm. Um, Nuts declassified the three main actors, um, Devin Workshire, Lindsay Shaw, and the other guy who's hot. Uh, they all have a, they oh. all have a uh, podcast. So nice. OK, yeah. well, Heather was on Ned's Declassified Survival Guide. She was also in all the Twilight movies. Oh, 
She was on the television show Selena, which I didn't even know that existed. Cool. Um, and she was most recently in The Walking Dead. Nice. She's had a good, good career. Yeah, definitely a good career. You go, girl. Yeah. Her dad was played by Vaughn Flores. He was on something called Earth, The Final Conflict, which I'd never heard of, but he was on like a lot of episodes of it. Mm. Sounds like something I don't want to watch. Yeah. Uh, and then he was a character actor. He was, or is a character actor. He was in a ton of stuff. Nice. Paula Brancati played Sarah Van Dyke, who was the mean girl who was in the cotillion with yeah. Courtney. She's in Jump In. Oh, okay. So she's coming, making a return. Mm hmm. She's also in Degra Degrassi, The Next Generation, something called Being Erica and something called Slasher, none of which I'd heard of. Cool. And then just a couple honorable mentions. Michael Rhodes played Bob Fenwick, the co-owner of the dairy. He's a character actor, been in tons and tons of stuff. Dwayne Marie played Big Pete. I don't even know who that is. Probably one of the dairy workers. Mm -hmm. um, he's also a character actor. Tons of stuff. Both of them were on Murdoch Mysteries, among other things. Nice. Thank you for mentioning. Yes. And then Jean Yoon played Corrine, their housekeeper. Mm -hmm. And she like has done a bunch of stuff, but she was on Kim's Convenience. Yeah. I've never watched it, but I've heard so many good things. Yeah, I've heard it's great. It's definitely on my list. Yeah. For sure. For sure. Maybe after I finish Abbott Elementary, I'll go to that one next. Ooh. Yes. Okay. The synopsis is as follows. Two spoiled sisters are made to work in the family business in the absence of their father. But when someone empties the company accounts, they must track down the culprit to save the business. The business. The business. Um, I'd say that's like eight out of ten accurate. I agree. I don't think yeah. it's inaccurate. Yeah. There's just like could be a little bit more clarity. Yes, I agree. Mm -hmm. Couple fun facts. Ooh, love them. I, I love a fun fact. <laughs> You're gonna like this one. Okay. This premiered on the same day as <gasps> Hannah Montana. No. Wow. <laughs> a pivotal day, March 2006. It, that's a pretty big day. Um, also, fun fact um, Allie had to get her driver's permit for the driving scenes because she didn't have one. Fun. Yeah. Well, that's the business. So, Al. Yeah. I would love to know what your first impressions were of this movie. Thanks, Val. Stu Krieger back at it again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I loved this movie. I feel like some of the ones over the last couple months have just been so fine. Um, get ready for my opinions when we watch High School Musical, when we're, go <laughs> we're go going to go back in time because that's going to be ranked very high. But this was <laughs> so good. I... There wasn't much that I didn't like about it. Honestly, I want I think I'm gonna give it an eight. Nice. I think that's well deserved. And I I, I don't want to say that it was like kind of overshadowed by High School Musical because it came out right before this. But I think that High School Musical hit so hard mm -hmm. that I'm interested to see the next ones that come and how that impacted. And yeah. like it did so well. So they made a second one. And so like, where does that come in in our timeline? But right. overall, this movie was so good. Allie did such a 180 from when she was in yes. Now You See It. So likable. The chemistry between her and her sister was incredible. Their lines were written so well. Mm -hmm. It did start off very kind of like, okay, but then it really, you like learn to love them and like them throughout. <laughs> well, there was more than one musical number. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I thought that it was fun and silly and heartfelt with a lesson and well cast. And I really did enjoy this movie a lot. Yes, I totally agree. Val, first impression. <laughs> I also loved this movie. I have been dying for a movie that I could really, really enjoy for a while. Like I liked yeah. Twitches, but like this felt so much more like that original group of decoms because yep. it's written by Stu, I'm sure. Yeah. Because, the, you know, I hated Go Figure, which was the other movie that this director mm -hmm. directed. So it had and to she have been did, writing. She also did a 180. I mean, yeah. get her on skates, 180 around and then kept skating <laughs> yeah. the other direction into a better <laughs> right. movie. Right. So it had to have been the writing. And like Stu is so he just gets 
this movie, like this type mm-hmm. of movie, right? Like it doesn't have to be childish. It doesn't have to be slapsticky. It doesn't have to be crazy. It just has to feel authentic. Like right. it just has to feel like real people with a real problem that they are addressing. And like nothing in this movie happens where it's like, that would never happen in real life. Like mm-hmm. you could believe literally everything that happens in this movie and it's still entertaining and interesting and fun and like sad at points. And like, mm-hmm. yeah, it's just a well done movie. Like this really is your well time done. to pause this podcast and go watch this movie. Yes. go. Watch I know this I'm movie. about to do a synopsis, but go watch this movie. It's so fun and so good. It's so fun. Definitely watch this one. Worth a watch for sure. Worth the watch. Worth the watch. Yeah. So that's it. Loved it. Uh, Al. Yeah. Favorite quotes or moments. Fa- I have, I have a few favorite quotes. There's so many good lines. I'm sure you might have one or four of them written down as well. <laughs> uh, we have, doesn't a classic just mean old, uh, used, <laughs> um, she she got the car for her birthday. And she goes, Dad, that's so hot and totally special. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. Wow. Lots lots in the beginning. This car is a stick shift. A stick. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> Love this real line of nobody said reality was pretty because mm-hmm. boy, oh boy, mama, I'm struggling this this year. So I get it. <laughs> That's no fair. How am I supposed to buy nail polish and bubble bath? (laughs) After not getting a paycheck after one day. (laughs) I have two more. Marry someone who loves to cook. Mm -hmm. I actually do need to take that advice because I hate to cook. And then the mean girl goes, we're going to letting them know that they're disinvited. (laughs) And I was like, it was written that way on purpose because she's stupid. (laughs) Okay, so my favorite moment in the movie was there's a song that's playing and mm-hmm. I'm going to sing it wrong, but these are the lyrics. Life has moments hard to describe, feeling great, feeling alive. <laughs> and this song is playing while we're watching the love interest boy shirtless put on spray deodorant. <laughs> <laughs> Life is moments hard to describe. Feeling great, feeling alive. <laughs> Makes sense to me. <laughs> this is my favorite part. That's so funny. I literally had to pause and went like, ah. <laughs> it was so great. <laughs> Val, what are your some of your favorite quotes and moments? Uh, I also had. Doesn't classic just mean old and used? Um, and I also had. You know what? Nobody said reality was pretty. Yeah, there it is. Did I did I call that? Or did I call that? <laughs> and then I had uh I can't see me, so who cares? <laughs> Which is advice we all need to take a little bit more yeah. often. You know, whoever came up with that ignorance is bliss thing was really onto something. <laughs> uh this one just was like a serious one that was good. We're kids. Why should it be up to us to solve everybody's problems? I feel like that's like yep, the world. That's right now. every decom. <laughs> and it's also the world. Like everyone's like, Gen Z is going to save us. It's like, OK, look, can we give sure. them a break? <laughs> yeah. I'd cry for you, but I don't want my mascara to run. That was another yeah. one from Sarah. That was before waterproof mascara was big. Mm-hmm. Although I did see a TikTok recently that it's bad for you. But what isn't bad for you? Yeah, I don't know. Probably everything. Um, this is another one that you'll probably like, Al. Okay. Living in the real world stinks. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't write it down because it's too close to home. <laughs> and then finally, twirl me, Philippe. Twirl me now. <laughs> <laughs> I loved their relationship, friendship yeah, storyline. I know. Uh, this was just such a cute... It was. It was such a cute. My favorite moment is actually multiple moments. And it's like the actually effective execution of the girls getting like stuff sprayed on them or like falling like a bunch. There was a bunch of slapstick in this movie, Uh but it worked because it wasn't accompanied by like a like a whoop, 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 whoop sound yeah, effect uh-huh. or like some stupid BS a like cat that. It, screaming on the other side of the right. fence. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. It was just like 
oh no, they fell and now they're covered in stuff that they fell in. Yep. And it's kind of funny, but it's also kind of not because they literally screwed up everything in the factory. Um, Like that is real. Like that is how that would actually happen in real life. Um, And you believe that it could happen to them because they're idiots who wear high heels to a dairy uh, factory (laughs) floor. Uh, So, (laughs) you know, so those, those are my favorite moments. Love it. Is there anything else you want to talk about before we just jump wow. into Wow, Val, Val is ready to rip her top off, rip off her white dairy coat, yes. rip off her top, put on a hairnet. <laughs> I'm already running around the factory floor. She is Val's running around this Spoiler <laughs> City factory. She is ready for me and my tomes to tell you the plot. Yes, <laughs> I am. I am so ready. Okay, we're nude. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that someone this is someone's first episode. <laughs> I'd be mean, like, what are they welcome? About? We are uh silly salamanders today. <laughs> Maybe because we haven't like done this in a while. It's been a couple yeah. weeks, I feel like. Although we've been together a lot. We've lately. been hanging out, hanging out so much this week. We're obs obsessed with one another. <laughs> Um, and more on that to come. All right. We open up on Taylor, Allie Michalka, getting her driver's license. Very distracted. Very fun. She is trying to get her driver's license and she turns on the radio. And then the driver guy who's doing the test is like, whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. And then um, as we're doing the test, she drives by and points out that that's her daddy's factory. When we find out her dad is Reed Callum, who owns the dairy. Um, then her phone rings. So she pulls over. Good. We love the safety of pulling over and not using her phone while driving. Um, and it's her sister. And her sister, who is AJ in this movie, Courtney, you know me. I'm going to use those interchangeably. <laughs> um, so then she's like asking, like, can I wear orange dress to my cotillion? And the guy is like, hey, if you don't get off the phone right now, like, you're not going to get your license. And she, so she's like, okay, well you talk to her. And so then he's the messenger between the two of them. <laughs> and she's like, yeah, you can buy the orange dress that ends up being a thousand dollars. And she then goes to tell the teacher, like, because we're so close and because we're such good friends, we have the, like set these boundaries for one another of like, uh, the, the shoes we're going to wear, the clothes, the colors, the, the, our activities so that like nothing oversteps so that if, I want to wear orange, but that's your color this season. I have to ask and make like get permission um, so that they don't fight about things. So I thought that's very uh, healthy, yes. um, especially if they figure that out without a therapist. Yes. Um, <laughs> also, I, I did just remember something I did want to bring up. Yeah. Stu is also really good at writing, especially female characters who are not like perfect, but are somehow still likable. Yeah. Like Xenon, I feel like falls into that category too, like where they're kind of, they're a lot, but like somehow they win people over and they win you over as the viewer. And like, that's not an an easy thing to do. Like Mm -hmm. we saw how easy it was to make her make Allie like very unlikable, right? Right. Like in a different movie. Yeah. And like, despite all of these weird things that she's doing, the driver's ed teacher still is like liking her. You know what I mean? Like he's not like Mm -hmm. mad. He's just sort of like flabbergasted Mm -hmm. (laughs) anyway keep going so essentially he tells her she's easily distracted and she's not going to get her license because of that and then she and that she always gets her way and then she basically coerces him into getting her way um which is very funny (laughs) then we cut to the factory so we meet dad and his business partner bob i think his name is right Mm -hmm. bob and i i i wrote mildly hot dad will reevaluate later (laughs) um gets coerced to go on a trip and step away from the factory. So he's really interested in in wildlife and jungle and butterflies. Butterflies. Br- yeah. Butterflies. So he um, gets to go on this trip where he's going to lose basically like going to the Galapagos and not having any service. He's going for a week. And Bob is like, you should go. I got you these tickets. Your girls will be fine. But it's his daughter's cotillion and he's like totally fine with missing it just so he can go on this once in a lifetime butterfly trip. Um, so we like see that. And you're kind of like, 
okay, Bob. <laughs> um, so then we come back home. She has her license and then she gets her old, her mom's old car. So we kind of realize now that mom's not really around hear more about it later, but she gets mom's old car, which is stick shift. Mm-hmm. She's like, well, I can't drive stick shift. And he's like, oh, we'll have someone teach it to you. So then we cut to a farm where we meet Jackson and his dad, who are the milk providers for all the dairies. And I wrote Jackson boy interest, which is a great name for a TV show at, <laughs> at Disney <laughs> channel. Um, <laughs> has to teach her how to drive stick shift. So he like starts talking shit to his dad and he's like, oh, she sucks. She's condescending and she's me. And then she like literally walks up behind them being like, oh, am I? (laughs) And she like says some things about him too. And so he kind of like has to teach her because he feels bad then. So they're driving around. She's about to drop the transmission. She's learning how to drive stick shift and they're driving around and he needs to go help out a cow. And I don't remember the cow's name. Do you remember the cow's name? Uh, it's okay. It's really not that important. So it goes out to help the cow that, um, there's a cow that's about to have a baby at some point soon and he's worried about her. So he gets out of the truck to go see if she's okay. And Allie jumps out after him and forgets to put on the parking brake. So he gets out of the truck to help and she didn't put the parking brake on. And he's like, wait, why did you get out of the truck? I was just helping her out. And then the truck literally slow motion into the lagoon. The truck's in the water. The truck is drowning. And dad gets mad at how much money it's going to cost. And he's really upset at her. Everyone's really upset at her. And she does feel really bad. This is where we start to break her down a little bit. So the first little bit of the movie, she's like hard headed, always gets her way. And then we kind of start to see her like melt down into a normal person, um, which is actually really lovely. So then dad apologizes that he's going to miss the party. And he's like, okay, well, I have to go. And he's like, I have to leave you. Um, You need to learn to like cook for yourself. So they're in the kitchen alone, just the two of them trying to learn how to open up a can of beans. Um, Never (laughs) used a can opener before or whatever it is. And they turn on the stove with a huge flame. Shout out to the stove in this movie. Um, (laughs) Very high flame. And then they get a phone call that's like, oh, you need to pick up this pair of shoes that you want right now. Otherwise, they're going to go out of stock. And so they leave the stove on. They throw the the washcloth over their shoulder or the tea towel, and it lands on the can of beans on the stove. And they drive away, come back <laughs> 45 minutes later and the kitchen has burned down. And I, I wrote, they burned down the kitchen due to ditziness. <laughs> um, so out of, out of like spite and to teach them a lesson, dad is making them get a job at the dairy that he owns. So he said, starting tomorrow, since it's summer school is out, you both need to get a job. You're starting tomorrow. You're up at five 30 in the morning. You're there at, you know, six 30 and you're going to get a job this summer. So dad wakes them up at like 4 a.m. And of course, this is also the day that he's leaving the country. So like you're starting a job tomorrow. I'm not going to set you up or explain anything to anyone at the factory. (laughs) And I'm also going to the Galapagos. So he like they doesn't hug them goodbye. He just like waves at them in the convertible and he's like, (laughs) bye. So then we learn that Bob, this like friend guy, is now the one that's in charge while he's gone. And I wrote, seems suspicious. And you know what? It's because it is. And we're all adults and we're picking up on it. And Mm -hmm. you know what? I feel like even the kids might have picked up on this one, too, in 2006. And uh, their job that they get at the factory uh, is on the line. So they are stacking tubs and making turning the tubs and making sure the expiration date. So they're like literally Lucille Ball in it through the factory. (laughs) (laughs) And so uh, because they're so ditzy, Courtney drops her phone in the sour cream And they can't find it. And they're like, stop the line, stop the line. And the guy who, I'm so sorry to this man, I'm going to say something really mean. It's probably the worst actor in this movie. Uh, I I think you're great, dude. Uh, But just not in 2006 in this movie. But he is like, no, we can't stop the line. That'll stop production and blah, blah, blah. And how are we going to find? Which one are you? How do we know which sour cream your phone dropped in? This character just solely exists to like, like be a target. Talk about how much of a problem whatever it is that they're doing is going Mm -hmm. to cause and so maybe that's why i don't like him but also he delivered the lines a little robotic yeah (laughs) 
For sure. So to find the phone, Taylor, who actually we find out is pretty smart. She's really good with math and she is really good with problem solving, calls Courtney's phone and they find which tub it's in. And they're like, see, problem solved. And now if you speed up the the line and add in three more buckets, you'll make up for the time that we just paused. So we find out here she's like really good at math. So then we cut to the lunchroom. It's lunchtime and everyone just like crickets as they walk in and they all hate them because they shut down production for a little bit. So they meet They meet their friend's dad here because they have a friend, the one who's in Ned's Declassified School Survival Guide. Uh, They meet her dad, who is like a family friend growing up, and he kind of takes them under their wing and is like, oh, you didn't have lunch? Well, it's not provided. And Courtney's like, where's the catering? And he's like, laugh out loud. Um, (laughs) And then we we get a little bit backstory of like, she's preparing for her cotillion. That's the following weekend that the one that dad's going to miss. And she needs a date. Um, So she doesn't have a date to her own cotillion, which is very important that you like have someone to dance with at this. I know nothing about this. So if I sound like I don't know anything about it, it's because I don't. (laughs) Um, Then we have sexy Frenchman Philippe is here. He is interning at the dairy for the summer. He is a foreign exchange student. And if you're hoping this goes in the direction that you think it's going, you bet your sweet butt it is. (laughs) And so now they're like, ooh, Philippe. And then Val, guess what? Guess what happens next? We have a musical number. (laughs) And so they're all singing and Fran is singing. She's got a great voice and they're they're singing in the, in the the, the, the cafeteria. They're singing around. And then the girls are like, we want to sing. And they're like, no, (laughs) <laughs> and then we cut to the next scene and then they're carrying these like vats of like blueberries and they like slip and fall. And this is where we don't get the, whoop, 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 whoop. right. <laughs> they just fall and then are covered, but then they're laughing and they're having so much fun. Cause they love each other. And they're like, oops, we slipped and fell into blueberries, but it's like silly and funny. Um, so then everyone is going to get their paychecks at the counter where you like check out for the day. You like do your timestamp and everyone's getting money and they're like, my check, my check. Thank you. And then they're like, our check. And they're like, you literally worked one day, you dummy. And they're like, well, how do we get nail polish and math bomb? So they're super confused. Um, but then we run into Jackson, the one who uh, whose truck drowned. And she wants to, you know, s- see how the cow is doing. And he's like, why do you care about the cow? And she's like, because I care about you. I think she genuinely cares about the cow, too. And the cow. <laughs> um, and they flirt. They flirt hoard. They flirt hoard here. Um, and then their friend who, who hangs around, Heather, um, they chatted with her and she's fun. And they were just like talking about cotillion things, talking about work things. So she's just kind of there. And then this is where we see Jackson finding out what to wear because Taylor is on her way over tonight. She's going to come see the cow. She's going to come see him. And Taylor's like putting on makeup and then she yawns. <sighs> And then he got her flowers. Okay, this wasn't a date, but he got her flowers. And I wrote, oh, my God. She took a nap. Yep. And she (laughs) fell asleep. And so he walks up from the kitchen table and throws the flowers in the trash can because he was expecting her and she never showed up. Okay, so um, Heather's there and they're like trying to convince Philippe to be her date. And so they're going through this like long process of Philippe is a foreign exchange student of the Millers. The Millers have a son who's like kind of nerdy, just like a little bit socially awkward. And they're like, if we can get in through Richie, we can get to Philippe. So they like go to pretend to invite Richie. And she's like, oh, no, I totally invited you. My invite must have gotten lost in the mail. Also, are you going to bring your really hot French guy too and he's like oh Philippe yeah let me go ask him and you like think that but he's gonna be like no but he literally just turns around and runs away and goes to get him um and so she asks uh to be his date and he says yes and so they're like great oh also Richie you can come to the cotillion too that was such a silly scene it was so funny mm-hmm. so then the next day they wake up at 5 30 in the morning and she's like oh my god I slept in oh my god Jackson oh my god I feel so bad so this is where we start to see those walls like continuing the kind of breakdown for her and they go back to work they're up at 5 30 back at work and so she was so tired because she had woken up at 4 a.m the first day and she didn't have a nap and you know what i'm that way too i get it girl (laughs) so then when we get to work we find out that all of the checks from yesterday that they got had bounced and it turns out the company is broke now i know what you're thinking bob sent away reed 
so that Bob could steal all the money from the company. And if you were thinking that, you are correct. And that narrative never changes throughout the rest of the movie. <laughs> and so then Heather's dad is like, okay, well, I'm going to go, I'm going to go find Bob and like try to take him down. Cause he's the one who's like in charge of all the accounts. And, um, so she's like, okay, well let's get back to work. And, uh, she turns on the milk thing and it sprays everywhere. It's very silly. And then the workers uh, are, have decided to work without being paid. Cause they're like, Reed would never do this to us. Even though at right now they think that it was Taylor and Courtney's dad. They're like, he would never do this to us. He cares about us. It's one day. Let's just work through today without being paid. But people are starting to kind of gripe about not being paid, but still need, needing to be able to pay their rent and their mortgages. And I, as a 29, almost 30 year old adult, uh, really related with that. <laughs> so then the girls go into this, into the office to like do some snooping and they're trying to figure out who did it. And they find a picture of Reed and Bob and, and their face is smashed. Like the, the glass is smashed and they're like, whoa, 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 whoa. We think it was Bob, but this entire time, everyone, because dad is in the Galapagos, they can't con con like contact him. So they're like, he is something he said in the very, very beginning was like, I'm going to have poor cell service, which you know what that means. They're going to need to contact him. So they go to Fran, uh, Fran's house and Keith's house who are so adorable and so cute. Um, Fran is the one who manages the factory. And we find out some backstory of Bob was furious when Reed wouldn't sell the dairy to this other company for like millions of dollars. Um, so this is kind of like, we're starting in the backstory, like why he did this. And then they hand make pizza. They're throwing the dough in the air. And it was so silly and so fun. And then it lands on someone's head and Fran goes, well, I'm not eating that. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So then we meet with our rich friends. Um, Courtney's like meeting with the other girls who are doing cotillion, this cotillion party. And they literally need like $25,000 apparently to be like, be a part of this. Per this is person. Like, per, yeah, it is insane how much money this cotillion costs and um they like need more money and so um they're like talking about well we can't have chicken we need lobster and steak so and, you know these 15 year olds are managing their parents money which is just insane but then taylor is like going into into like fight or flight mode and is going into fight mode of how can I keep everyone around? What would dad do? I'm going to try to fix these paychecks. I'm going to try to budget. And she wants to fix the problem. So she uses the party allowance from the cotillion, $20,000 to pay the salaries of the workers who are working. And Courtney's like, no, I'm not doing that. It's, this is my party. This is my cotillion. You got a cotillion. I don't want to do this. And then she ends up doing it. And then <laughs> she goes to see Jackson and she tries to apologize and he's just like not having it. He's like, I don't care. So now Fran is trying to get them to all work in like the lunchroom. And Taylor has this idea that you can kind of see concocting in her head. And she sends Courtney out to go get her phone. And Courtney's like, why can't you go get it? And she's like, can you just go get my phone? So that she was just trying to get Courtney to leave the room. So she goes up to talk to everyone and says, let me help. But then everyone's still mad at them because they're like, this is your fault and blah, blah, blah. This is before she pays Act their paychecks. Yeah. Actually gives them, gives them the money. And then, uh, as an aside, when Courtney goes outside, she sees Pierre or Philip, Philip, Philip oh, yeah. Pierre outside, like stacking things in a truck. And she asks him to the dance and he says yes. And then she comes back and everyone's gone. Um, and it's because Taylor went to the bank to take out $20,000 and it was Courtney's money and she's pissed. But then everyone else is happy. They're like, sure, I'll start working again because I'm getting paid. That's fine. And then she goes to Jackson, spills how she's feeling. So once again, starting to get a lot of character development from Taylor. And she's like sad and upset and, and I'm sorry. And I just, I don't know what to do because my dad's not here. And, and I feel bad for all these people who work so hard and we're a small business. And then the cow, the cow is having a calf. And so there, there, there's a birth. If that was a bingo square for us, that would be marked to this one. It would be Quince and this one. And then they're like running to the barn to help dad. And then they're holding hands. So you're like, Okay. And then the calf is born, but not before she's like, <clears throat> so we just like see this whole movie. She's such a problem solver. The, the mom cow was not having uh, the cow, other baby cow because it was like nervous. So they're like, she's like, yeah, it's cause her boyfriend's here like shoe bowl. And so then she can have the cow. It's so funny. And then 
The worst part of this movie is when sh- the baby cow is born, which, you know, they fake. They covered it in, you know, goo. And then she goes up to what is supposed to be this newborn calf and hugs it and kisses it on the head. And all I can think is placenta. <laughs> and then they hold hands again. And then they real kiss in a field when she's in like <laughs> new, like he, she's wearing his clothes, which is like so cute. And his T-shirt mm-hmm. and those little gym, sho- gym shorts. That was hot. So Courtney and Taylor are not talking to each other. It's more Courtney's not talking to Taylor because she's mad at her, but they're working on the line next to each other. And she's like, hey, you need to blah, blah, blah. And the guy's like, you need to make sure the expiration dates are right, blah, blah, blah. And she's like, okay, whatever. And she accidentally types in the date of her birthday. That's going to be detrimental. And then we find out that the milk refrigerators are broken and they might have to shut down while the milk refrigerators are broken because what do they do if all the milk goes expired? They can't make any cream or cheese or cream cheese. So then Courtney's pissed about the party. She quits. She up and quits the factory. She says, F this business. She's out. So then Heather brings Courtney back down to reality because she goes to visit Heather, who is the friend, guy friend who works at the factory, his daughter. They're all the same age. She's going to come to the cotillion as a guest. And she goes, oh my gosh, I love your dress. Where'd you get it? And they were talking about how like she doesn't have as much money as them. And she wears hand-me-downs and her mom tailors her clothes. And they were having this like heart to heart. And she goes, uh, Courtney goes, am I really that bad? And her friend goes, well, yeah, (laughs) was very funny. Mm -hmm. Um, And so she kind of has this like come to Jesus moment a little bit um, and then goes home and has a heart to heart with their housekeeper about how she's missing her mom. And, um, and her mom was, uh, the housekeeper was around and knew their mom. And so it was just like a very nice moment for Courtney. So Courtney's kind of starting to come back down to earth a little bit and kind of realize like, Oh, Taylor is doing good things. Oh, I don't need to cotillion and all this stuff. So we're starting to get to that point. So then her and Taylor make up, they have the conversation and both of them are like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And then Courtney is like, okay, I do want to help. I will give the rest of my cotillion money to you. That's not important anymore. I want to help people too. So then <laughs> Philippe calls and is working out over the phone, literally like tank top, one armed weightlifting. So funny. <laughs> um, and she's like, I'm so sorry. I I have to turn you down for the dance and the party. Um, because I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna have it anymore. Like I'm all of the money is, is going to go somewhere else. And he goes, Oh, well, I want, I want to invite you to this dance that I'm going to have, which happens to be at the same place, like uh, the day before at the country club. So he's like, I want you to come with me to the, with the Millers to this dance party. And <laughs> then the girls give her shit for um, kind of like pulling out uh, and and not being in the cotillion anymore. Like, well, you can't be at the country club if you're not going to be in cotillion and we're going to have steak and lobster. And now we have to pay more money because you're not paying any money. And she has a heart to heart with Philippe that she wants to be her own person. And like, it's like super cute. They dance on the dance floor. He's a really good dancer. And they end up almost kissing in uh, a field with uh, where the um, sprinklers go off, which was so she's the man. It was so funny. <laughs> um, and God, I just like love that they're their own people and they have their own love interests in this movie and it doesn't take over and it's like supportive men. Oh, this movie is so good, you guys. Okay. Um, so then Jackson and Taylor are watching maybe a wonderful life, maybe something else. And they like almost start making out on the couch and then Kareen comes in and she's like popcorn, <laughs> um, which was so silly. And then they're having um, a party at Franz to like celebrate that they're able to, they got through the week. We've all had a rough week. So Fran and Keith are having everyone over to just celebrate a week of work and they're all having fun, but then they find out that all the dates are wrong. So she accidentally put in the wrong expiration date. So she literally, they sent out things two days ago that were supposed to expire on Saturday, which is detrimental. And Courtney's like, Oh my God, this is my fault. When we were fighting, I must've put in the wrong date. How can we fix this? And they're like, well, if we can have more people, we need like 30 more people to help us down the line to like get this stuff done. If we can just remake everything. So she's like, I know where we can find 30 people. And they go back to that country club and they try to recruit people from the cotillion. And the girls are like, girl, what are you doing here? Leave. And she's like, I'm trying to, <laughs> my, one of my favorite lines I forgot to mention that I saved for now is Courtney's like, I've learned stuff. <laughs> 
I was like, 2016, Kylie Jenner, this is the year of realizing things. It was so funny. And she's like trying to help. And she tries to get the mic back, but she ends up uh, pushing Sarah or whatever her name is in the pool, which was so funny. And then her friend goes, oh, look, the dessert parade. <laughs> it's, just like, it's like be our guest where shit just gets like wheeled out on trays then no one gives a shit so they're like okay well that didn't work back to the factory to try to do what we can and they get back to the factory to like do all this work and dad comes home and he's in a suit and they're like dad what are you doing home and he was like I realized that I missed you guys and I wanted to be at the cotillion so I came home early so he went to the cotillion all dressed up and they weren't there and then her friends were like actually we realized you were right we're here to help so not Sarah who got pushed in the pool but the dessert party girl and her out for her friend came to help <laughs> and we find out that they did it. They were able to do it. And so dad says he'll help. And it was all Bob's fault. He stole all the money. And then, and that was it. And then they figure out how to get the dairy because Jackson's dad was like, I'll supply the milk. I'm happy to donate so that no one has to shut down so that I can still have business. Cause if you're not in business, then I'm not in business. And then they did it. And so they're like, one last thing has to happen. Your cotillion dance. So she dances with Philippe and then dad dances with Taylor. And then she dances with Jackson and then Fran and is dancing. And then, then the weird, the, the Reggie kid dances with Heather where you're like, okay. And everyone is just so happy at the end because they saved the factory. And then we cut to the next day. They have no money. They're starting all over. And dad was like super chill about it. He was like, you know what? That's fine. I started from scratch once. I can start from scratch again. And he's like, you girls take the day off. You sleep in. He turned off their alarm so that they could sleep in. But then as he's driving to work the next day, they pop up in the back and say, dad, we want to work at the factory. And it was a beautiful story. <laughs> <laughs> it, was. it was. It was so really good. Was. This this movie is so good. And, and it really premiered good. on the same day as Hannah Montana. <laughs> I knew you'd like that. I did. <laughs> Yeah, it's a it's just a lovely story. Like the messaging is good. And you're mm -hmm. right. Like the love interests are like more like they're three dimensional. Like they're mm -hmm. not just like, you know, cute boys that exist. And they, you know, they still have fun with it. Like freaking Philippe, you know, doing his bicep curl yeah. and stuff like that. But like the, he's more than just that guy who does a bicep curl. He's yeah. he like understands very much what is going on and mm -hmm. like has perspective on it. And they were really there to help them like decipher their emotions and really yes. help them become like the women they're supposed to be. And so right. it wasn't like this movie is about you finding a boyfriend or no, you know, it was about you finding someone who can who you can confide in to help you figure out who you're supposed to be. And we'll sort of like mirror back to you like. Both of them gave them perspective in different ways, right? Like yeah. Jackson was very judgmental at first and had zero expectations mm -hmm. of Taylor. And she was like offended by it. But she yeah. then kind of understood why, you know, mm -hmm. and she was like, I don't want to be that person anymore. I don't want to be the person that no one expects anything of anymore. Mm -hmm. And then Courtney needed kind of to be like beaten over the head with it a little bit more. And yeah. like. Philippe was like way more kind of obvious with her. Right. He was like, mm -hmm. I don't care about the cotillion. I just want you to have fun and be happy. And like, yeah, that's all you should care about, too. You know, like these things and like status things are stupid. Like they don't mean anything. Yeah. You know, she needed to hear that. And she needed someone who was not going to like care whether or not she was rich or whether or not she was right. having a cotillion. Right. Which he didn't. So, yeah, they both like their partner in this movie was like exactly who they needed them to be yeah which was really cool yeah it was really great and like it was refreshing like you sort of joked about it at the end where the dad's like unfazed by the fact that all of a sudden he's broke but like first of all it felt believable because he just seemed like the kind of guy who was kind of unflappable and like that's why he was successful is like he mm -hmm. wanted to like do you know just do right by other people and provide jobs and stuff but i think that he in a way like wanted like he was like happy to like be back starting over like in a way. Right. Because he had yeah. gotten so far away from it and the girls had been kind of frankly harmed by mm -hmm. like how privileged they'd been. Um, and I think he was just kind of like, yeah, you know what? Here we go. Yeah. Let's like, restart. Yep. So, yeah, I everything in this movie, like there were definitely things in this movie that were silly, but nothing felt unbelievable. Yeah. Which is sure. so important. Yeah. 
Ah, <sighs> fun times. Fun times. Also, the songs when what's the woman's name? Wendy. What's her name? She no Fran. 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 Whenever Fran is singing, it's actually Blair Reinhard. Mm. And uh, like the song that played at the end is called It's All Good Now. Yeah, that was a cute song. It was a cute song. Which leads us into our first box in our game that we like to play called Bingo. Bingo. <laughs> also, Cow bingo. Even, I was going to say more apropos because there's a lot of farm stuff. Yeah. Farm. Oh, yeah. The farmer, 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 bingo, farmer, bingo, bingo. <laughs> there. OK, so Val, for this first box, I'm going to start it off. Yeah. One hit, one or song. Um, we can use some of these decom songs that we've never heard before, but there was a cover of a of, of yeah. a work song. And is that a one hit wonder? See, I don't think so. Unless that song What's the is song? a one hit wonder. It was. um. What was the name of the song? I couldn't remember of it. Remember I know. It. I should have written it down in the moment and I didn't. Um, Me, and it's I not did listed. the same exact thing. Yeah. And it's not listed on IMDb. <sighs> Let me see real quick. Because we've Just... done that in the past where we were like, it was a cover of a one hit wonder. Right. When they, it was Buffalo Dreams when uh, it was Lean On Me. Yeah. But I remember listening to it and thinking to myself, I don't think this song is a one hit wonder. Like I remember having that exact thought when it played yeah so i don't think that okay that song, we won't mark it the original song is one hit wonder great right it's by like the rolling stones or something <laughs> something like that probably <gasps> okay breaking the fourth wall or looking into the camera no however mm-hmm. there is a moment at, towards the end when in the scene where they're all dancing courtney or or uh aj like I think accidentally just for <gasps> like a second looked into the camera. All I, right. I want to count it. Okay. We can count it. She I, looked I might camera. be wrong, but I was like, did she just like, I didn't like <laughs> rewind to like check, uh-huh. but like, I was like, did she just look into the camera? That's so funny. All right. We marking it. Uh, holiday themed. No, not unless you count milk. <laughs> Got milk. Clunky metaphor. Giving birth. <laughs> <laughs> i think that no. if it's like a falling apart to come back together like you can always come back together if you fall apart yeah i'm just trying to think of like if there was an actual metaphor like you know a thing that represents that i don't know that it i don't know that there's a clunky metaphor okay parents who just don't get it no 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 dad gets he's it not even around <laughs> true but he gets it more than they do yeah. Cool non-parent adult. Fran. Fran. Someone too famous for a TV movie. Were they f- that famous at this point? When was Phil of the Future? But th- even then, I feel like she was kind of like made for TV movie at that point. Yeah. Yeah, it was 2004. So she was past Phil of the Future. Yeah. I don't know. I think it's yeah. kind of up for debate, but I think. I she's... think that if it's going to be someone who became famous, if anything. Yeah, that's okay. fair. Competition to resolve the central problem. No. Nope. Montage sequence. I can't think of one, actually. Wow. Wow. I don't think there was one. <laughs> Whoa. A we mark that one stew. like every time. I know. <laughs> Stu doesn't need a montage. Hell yeah. <laughs> Stu, shout out. Stu, shout out. Buy our merch. Buy our merch. Cliche villains. I mean, yeah. The Anyone both- named Bob. Yeah, both Bob, the conniving boss, and then also Sarah, the yeah. mean girl. Mm-hmm. Clothes or items you own? So this is cheating a little bit, but not really. We've counted it every other time. She uh, Taylor has the orange translucent VTech phone, the mm-hmm. cordless phone. They brought it back, baby. Yeah. <laughs> um, Courtney had this big, like, layered necklace. Oh, yeah. That had really had big, like, bubble balls on it. Yeah, I had one of those with small bubble balls. Does that count? Sure. Why not? Great. Rotten Tomatoes, 40 to 60. Oh, boy. I want it to be high. So I'm just going to go for it. I'm going to say 64. 62. <gasps> Yay. Yay, Val. Boo, bingo. Boo, bingo. <laughs> I'm going to roll, baby. Yeah. Happily ever after. You bet. <laughs> 
Yeah. Yeah. You bet. Kissing, dancing. <gasps> Val, did you say kissing? <gasps> almost kissing. Yes. Almost kissing. <laughs> there was actual almost kissing. Actual almost kissing and real kissing. Mm-hmm. Which we do mark the box if there's almost kissing because you are almost kissing before you do real kiss. Right. But there was got- a real almost kiss. Correct. So Correct. fun. <laughs> Someone who became famous. Allie, Allie and AJ. Betraying of one's real friends or values. I would say Courtney. Yeah. When she like refuses to help. Yeah, for sure. Your childhood crush. No, I feel but like if it's, I. It, yeah. I feel yeah. like if one of us had, had watched Vampire Diaries, we both would have been like, hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I all mean, the people he, who are listening now that watch Vampire Diaries are screaming <laughs> at us to be like, mark this for me. <laughs> he is objectively a good looking guy. Yeah. Like, very kind of conventionally good looking. Yeah. Uh, obviously bad special effects or stunts. The only one that I noticed was when they were driving in the car in the very beginning. It was very clearly a green screen. Oh, OK. We can count that. Cool. Disney Channel star. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Allie and AJ, they sure did talk about recycling on those commercials. <laughs> <laughs> they sure were in the Disney Adventures magazine that I got. <laughs> Al. Musical number. Ah, Val, there were so many. <laughs> That's why this movie was so good. <laughs> Thank you, Stu Krieger. <laughs> and friend. I don't remember your name, who he wrote this for. Yeah, I can't remember either. Magic. No. No. Someone says the title of the movie. Nope. Thank nope. goodness. Nope. Nope. Well, weren't we the real cowbells all along? <laughs> no. Scooby Dude. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, they sure did. I even wrote... So like early on in the movie, they identify that Courtney is very good at computers and Taylor is very good at math. And I was like, hmm, I wonder if this will come in handy for a Scooby-Doo. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and it did. And it did. Sure. Scooby did. <laughs> uh, the heroes create the problem. No. No, not. Not creating it this time. No. Bob. Bob creates the Bob. problem. Bob creates the problem. Last but not least, weed is a fish out of water. Yup. Yup. <laughs> yes, very much so. About as lead, lead is, is a fish out of watery <laughs> as you can get. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Val. Well, while we live, laugh, loved this movie, we did not get any bingos this week. Oh, shoot. That's okay. Man, if we had watched Vampire Diaries, <laughs> we would have gotten it. But that was fun. That was very fun. All right. Well, now, Val, are you ready for Al steals a game from the Internet? (laughs) This game is called Find the Invisible Cow. So I'm going to send you a link. And so everyone can go play on your own. Okay, we'll put it in the show notes. Yep. And so what you do is you you press start and then there's a cow on your computer screen but you can only hear where it is and you have to click on it okay. where it is. So you, and like, as you get closer, it's like hot and cold. As you get hotter, it gets louder. The moves uh, get louder. Okay. So Val and I are going to race to see okay. if we can find the cow, the fastest, best two out of three. All right. Tell me when to start. Okay. Ready? <laughs> Ready and go. Oh, I got it. Did you get it? No, I don't understand. He says, cow, 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 cow. And yeah. as you get as you get hotter, you have to find the invisible cow and click on it. Yeah, I feel like I'm clicking on it and I'm not. Your cursor will change to a click. Oh, I found it. Okay. Okay, we'll scrap that one. <laughs> so we're going to refresh and ready and go. Oh, I got it. That was quick. 1.0. I found it. Moo. <laughs> I, it's so funny. Go, 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 go. Moo. <laughs> All right, Val. If you don't win this next one. I'm not gonna. <laughs> okay, ready? Go. Found it. 
Oh, literally a second after you. <laughs> All right. All comes down to this. Okay. You re- ready? Yeah. Ready? Go. Oh, oh I win. Found it. <laughs> Good job, Al. Thanks for playing. Al steals the game from the internet. Yay, Belle. Yay. This we, was so fun. We sure did ring those cowbells. We did, and we love cowbells. We love cowbells. Big fans, big cowbells fans over here. Yep. Good job, Stu. Good job, Stu. All right, next week, Val. Now, what are we watching? (laughs) Now, we are watching High School Musical. There we go. There it is. Val and I mentioned earlier that we had a little surprise, and that surprise is that we are directing an improvised decom show here in Chicago Mm -hmm. at the I.O. Theater. We premiere, Val and I are not in it. We are directing because we have so many talented people who are going to do much better than I could ever do. And I don't want to speak for Val, but that I <laughs> do. So yeah, I'm um, excited to, to do something different than just performing to direct. Yeah, very excited to create and form minds, um, around, uh, the ideas that are decoms mm-hmm. and the tropes that are decoms and the mm-hmm. live, laugh, loves that are decoms. <laughs> so come on, see it. We'll be posting it on our socials. The cast is absolutely incredible. We are very excited and uh, can't wait for you to see it. Yep. Fridays in July and August at the IO Theater. Oh, yeah. And Val, can you tell everyone to like and subscribe? Yeah. Hey, guys, like and subscribe, please. Leave us a review, you know, all that good stuff. Um, It really does help. Like after we got that spate of reviews like a few months ago, we got a ton of new downloads because people find you because mm-hmm. of your reviews and follow us on Instagram because Al needs Please. you to follow us. <laughs> we hit over 400 though. And so I'm happy about that. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. All right. Well, everyone have a great, have a great. <laughs> now Val has to mark this. Is Why would you do that? Have a great, you can bleep it out. You can moo it out. <laughs> have a great <laughs> day. <laughs> Bye Val. Bye, Al. This podcast was produced by me. And me. And it was edited by me. The music was composed by Michael McNally. You can find us online at the tridentnetwork.com slash decommentaries hyphen pod. And you can find us on Instagram and TikTok at decommentaries. Decommentaries is a part of the Trident Network. To learn more about our videos, live shows, and other podcasts, please visit the tridentnetwork.com. Disney Channel Original Movies. Damn it, Allie.